desert so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more light. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. a fool to wander and stray. Straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more light. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Like a blind man, I wandered along. Worries and cares, I claim for my own. And like the blind man, that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow. They tell me of a home far beyond the sky. They tell me of a home far away. They tell me of a home where no dark clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Savior came from glory. Now we made the lane to walk in and cause the blind to see. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Y'all know this song? I wanted y'all to be loud, see if we could get the cops ca called on us. You know? <laughs> Never had the cops called on on a church gig. You know? That would that would be something, right? But it is so good to be here. I I remember I, I drove up and then I parked at the very last spot and I was and I was just as I was walking up, it, I was like, it feels nice to be here on a Sunday morning 
and knowing that we're going to have church here. And, and this is church, right? You know, that's the building, but we've been having church. And so it's just good to be able to see everybody here, um, even though we're spread apart. But guys, we, we spread apart in the sanctuary <laughs> anyway, right? So it's just about it's just about the same, right? But it it feels so good for you uh, for everybody to be here. Um, I do just want to say a few uh, announcements about things that we're doing. This is kind of stage one of our reopening plan. So our leadership board has 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 met and has talked a little bit about uh, how we're going to reopen and come back into worship. And so uh, this was stage one. Um, to have a parking lot service, to be outside in the air with the breeze where uh, the threat of spreading would be a lot less and out in the sunlight where the virus dies. And so this is kind of phase one. Um, just to kind of let you know some preliminary things, phase two will be allowing other small groups to kind of meet. So like Wednesday workers, maybe our youth group, um, maybe some Sunday schools. Um, that, like if we utilize the West Hall, uh, at, at different times, like on a Sunday. Like I've seen some churches say like one Sunday school can meet at eight and then they do church and then another Sunday school meets at 12 and then two um, so that we're not having to disinfect or all be in the building at the same time. Um, cause, um, Cause we can spread out in our, in our sanctuary pretty easily, but our doorways and our hallways are kind of things that we're worried about. And so. Uh, so phase three uh, will be coming back into the sanctuary um, with some distancing and with some like going on every other pew, kind of like what we're doing here, every other parking space. And so that's kind of the plan. Um, so that's where we are kind of right now. Um, and so uh, we are still having an online worship option. I'm still recording those videos because I, I know there's several people who aren't here that uh, have told me that they weren't going to be coming. Um, so we're going to still offer that. So if anybody, if you're talking to anybody, let them know that we're still offering our online worship option for, for people who want to stay home. So we'll have two options going forward. Um, so we'll have this parking lot service until we go back into the sanctuary. And we'll also still have our online worship service. Okay? Does that sound good? All right. So we will keep everybody informed through email, through Facebook, about when these phases will come into effect, okay? So just keep looking out for all that. But, but uh, as we begin worship, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray together. O oh, merciful and just God, we gather here this morning, and each of us has many concerns upon our hearts. Our hearts are concerned with everything that is going on in our world, with the coronavirus and all those people who have been affected by it and also with the systems in, in, of injustice that have stripped people with, with their very dignity and their lives. And so Lord, help us to be those people who seek your peace and your justice, who would fight for those who are oppressed and who will protect those who need protection. So be with us this day, guide us in our worship and make us to be more um, uh, more agents that work towards a more just world. And it's in your son's powerful name that we pray. Amen. Our band has another song for us today. sing along with us. We don't have a screen, but you know the words. It's 
some barn swallows too. <laughs> but I forgot to mention that we were, uh, this is a simplified service uh, because for our distance there's a few things that we're not going to do so we're not going to have any children's time or anything like that. We're going to just have, we had some songs, uh, we're going to do some prayers now and then with a, a message and then just close with uh, another song and then there'll be an opportunity uh, that as we close, you can come up and if you if you brought some, an offering with you, um, that to drop it up in this bucket as you leave uh, from worship. So we're not going to be passing any offering plates or uh, anything like that. But we are together, so of course I'm going to collect an offering. That's just what pastors do. Um, but we now I want to now call you to our time of our of prayers. Um, and so. Uh, we might have to yell a little bit louder, but uh, are there any joys or concerns that you'd like to have lifted up today? Uh, yeah. Just keep doing your thoughts and prayers. Okay. 
continue to pray for Georgie. Yes, we definitely can do that. Yes. Any others? Oh, yes. Jerry. So for your sister Joy Van Hus, who was taken by the hospital or to the emergency room, was that t today? Last week for a possible heart attack and blood clot. We'll we'll pray for her, um, and also your mother Juanice Van Hus, who is also on our prayer list. We'll lift them both up in prayer. Any others? Yes, Connie. Oh, okay. So Art. Art Rayburn, who's the acting pastor at First Baptist, has uh, been diagnosed with colon cancer. So we'll be praying for him. Any others? No? Okay. I know we're, we'll still be praying for our country as we are reopening uh, from the COVID-19 virus and for things to go safely. I know there's, there's lots of spots where the things are opening back up. So we just do want to be in prayer for that, and then also with all of the uh, the riots and, and things that have been the uh, the protests that have been happening around our nation. We also want to be just in prayer for peace and for healing uh, to be uh, in our nation. And so uh, let us join our hearts and our minds together and go to the Lord in prayer. And I will uh, lead us in a pastoral prayer, and we'll all close the Lord's prayer together. But would you join with me in prayer? O oh God of love and mercy, you have given us stewardship to care for this wonderful planet and to care for our neighbors. We have been blessed with a variety of gifts and talents, and you call us to use them to help others. So open our hearts to ministries of peace and justice today. Embolden us to become part of the great cloud of witnesses who were unafraid to be your disciples. We think of so many in this church and in our lives who have gone before us, who have braved the difficulties that are presented by life and who have remained faithful to you. So Lord, we name those saints in our hearts before you, grateful for their example. We also name in our hearts those people who are ill, who are mourning the loss of loved ones, who feel lost and alone, those who are part of cultures that have been oppressed. So help us to be those people who, by our example, will break those chains of poverty and burst open the doors that have imprisoned so many spirits. And be with us that this church that it may be a true witness to your son, Jesus the Christ, in all that we do. And be also with those whom we have lifted this day, those who are on our active prayer list, those that we have said aloud and shared with one another, and also those that remain silent and written upon our hearts. And Lord, we lift this prayer up to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, your son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So our scripture passage today is from the Gospel of Matthew, from the 28th chapter. This is verses 16 through 20. This is the commissioning of the disciples, what we know as the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord God, take my lips and speak through them. And take our ears and open them so we may hear your word for us. And then take our lives and our hearts and fill them with your love. So that we may be found to be faithful servants who are grounded in your word and in your love. Amen. <coughs> I told Marvin when we when we, we did a practice setup of our uh, sound system on Thursday, and I was just sweating into my eyes. I just was sweating so much. I was like, I was going to have to have a, a sweat rag with me for uh, for church today. So uh, I might have to wipe my face every now and then just to keep the sweat from coming into my eyes. But how many of you noticed how that scripture passage started? How many of you, I, I know when we think of the Great Commission, we, we kind of focus on that, go therefore, you know, baptize people of all the nations and teach them to obey everything I've commanded. And I think sometimes we overlook what happens in the very first verse. How did it start? It said, now the 11 disciples. Why were there 11? Judas is no longer one of the 12 disciples, right? Judas had betrayed Jesus, and after betraying Jesus and then finding out that their plan all along was to crucify him and kill him, he goes and, and kills himself. So these 11 disciples who, who are going to, to Galilee, who are leaving Jerusalem and are going to this mountain where Jesus directed them, they're, they're, it's no longer the 12 disciples, it's no longer the original group, the original 12 that Jesus first called. It is now a broken group. Have you ever experienced brokenness like this? Have you ever been a part of a group or maybe a relationship where there's been betrayal, where you have experienced heartache, where there's a failure, where somebody has made a, a huge disappointment? Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever felt that? If we're all really honest with ourselves and maybe think throughout our life, we may all have a point where we have just felt broken, where we have felt a part of a, of a system or, or some kind of relationship or group that has just broken apart. You see, in Jesus' passage today, he is giving them the Great Commission. So he has, uh, if you kind of remember the context, this is after Easter. This is the very last thing that happens in the Gospel of Matthew. Verse 20 is the end of the gospel. And, and so he is about to give them this very important task, this commission uh, this, that we call the Great Commission. To go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. But you see, Jesus called these his original 12 disciples to be part of a group a part of a, of a brotherhood uh, that that were bonded that were bonded together and Jesus is now giving them their probably most important task he's done a lot of teaching he's done a lot of showing them what to do and now he's saying it's all on you this is your work that is before you to go and to baptize, to build the church, to teach them, to how to obey everything that I have taught you. And he knows that they are a broken group. He knows it's no longer the 12 disciples. It's now the 11 disciples. He knows that they must have felt betrayed, uh, that Jesus or Judas didn't just betray Jesus. He betrayed them all. He betrayed each of those 11 disciples. And I'm not really sure how they felt about that because I'm not going to claim I, I was there and I knew exactly how they felt. But I can just imagine. And imagine for yourself how you would feel if you were one of those 11 disciples. You had been called out of your past life to come and to follow Jesus. And you found out that he was the son of God. And all these miraculous things happened. And he taught you this new way of living under God's love. And God's grace and you have been on some major highs my friend and also some major lows 
You see Jesus at, at, at his best, teaching in front of huge crowds and performing miracles. And you've also seen those lows where, Jesus, where Judas betrayed Jesus, where he was tried and beaten and crucified. And then also again, the high of the resurrection and, and, and just imagine how they must have felt. I mean, before this, right before this, they were closed and locked behind doors after the resurrection. And Jesus had to come and get them and then tell them, go back to Galilee, to this mountain where I'm about to give you this great commission. So I'm not really sure, I'm not 100% sure how they felt. But I could just imagine that as they're traveling once again under Jesus' direction, with their master leading them to this mountain, I could consider that they were feeling on this roller coaster. But more, more than not, they are feeling some highs and some, and some lows, but also some brokenness, and, and feeling like their, their group, this disciples' group, is, it was broken and shattered. And if we're all being honest here this morning, it's a little bit about how I feel personally in, in the world right now. I feel like the world is broken and shattered, and, and we have been, as, as, the, as the world, battling this worldwide pandemic with COVID-19 and where people have lost their lives. Way too many people have lost their lives, and, and economies are in a mess, and, and, and people have lost jobs. There's all kinds of things that, that have been happening. And, and now on top of that, we're, we're having protests over racism in our country. So I can't imagine how those disciples must have been feeling walking back to Galilee, but I can think, I can make them think, or I can imagine them thinking as they're walking with Jesus, okay, what's next? What now? And I kind of ask myself that same thing. Just as we are coming off the heels of battling this pandemic, now we have the protests over racism in our country, which is a real problem. And I honestly feel kind of like those disciples, maybe scared. I don't know if you feel scared, but and maybe I feel scared in a different way than you feel scared. But I kind of feel like our, our, our country, our nation, and, and our, kind of, our world is broken because of racism and, and also because of experience this pan, of, of this pandemic that we have been going through. And I'll, I'll probably be, be a little bit more vulnerable this morning than I normally am. Uh, I grew up, as you, many of you know, as, as a United Methodist pastor kid. Uh, and so I've experienced a lot of different churches in my life. Uh, and... And I also grew up going through Plano, which is much more diverse. Uh, had, I had friends of all backgrounds. I had uh, in my co we were, I had four. I was a part of four friends that we were friends from the fifth grade, I think, all the way through high school. I was, uh, of course, a United Methodist. One was Catholic, one was Jewish, and one was a Muslim. We all played football together. We all had different things, but we all kind of were just friends and always together. We went to lunch almost every sun, uh, every day together because we had off-campus lunch. But as I have transitioned to being a pastor myself, I have, I have served my entire career as a pastor in the Northwest District in either Grayson County or in, in Wise County in Decatur. And so those uh, the counties are much more uh, uh, rural and less racially diverse than where I went through high school. But I've been through church, I, I went to confirmation at Highland Park, United you know, Methodist Church. And I had about 275 kids in my confirmation class. But then right after that, we went to First Lucas, uh, which is now completely different. Um, First Lucas was way out in the country, uh, what, like east of Allen by about, tw uh, about 15 or 20 minutes. And so we went from Highland Park and then first Dallas, where my mom did her first part of her internship, to first Lucas. And so we've, I've kind of been all over the place, but uh, in my own pastorate and in my own times as a pastor, I have experienced, or not, I've experienced a, a lot of white privilege. And, and, and being a white person, being a, a man, and then also being a pastor, is kind of like what I like to call is the privilege trifecta. 
I can walk into a restaurant in, in town and because I've served uh, you know, here at Howe, I've served at Sherman first, and I've served, I've served at Friendship in Sherman, a lot of people in the county know me. And so I, um, I'll walk into a restaurant or in, into a grocery store, and, and more times than not, somebody I, I see, I, I know somebody that I see there. And, and there's more times than not, uh, Trax restaurants where this happens a lot, um, I'll go into Trax and, and people will want me to pray for their meal. And so my friends, I, I have experienced so much white privilege in my, in my life, I sometimes don't even realize it. That, pe- pe- that I can walk into a restaurant and people instantly, like, just hand me some authority because I was their pastor at one point. But I know there's a lot of people who, who, who don't walk around like that in this world. And now I'm probably more afraid or, or afraid in a different way than I've never, that I've ever been. Um, and it might be a little bit different than how you are afraid. But as you know, Laura and I are very close to being able to adopt Noah and Hannah. And so the, the issue of racism is always something that I have known about, but I have always had um, uh, people of all kinds of different faith backgrounds and race backgrounds as a part of my life, but it's never been directly in my family. And so as we're seeing all of these things about the Black Lives Matter and about these protests and about the riots that have been happening, honestly, I'm seeing them differently than I've ever have before because I'm, I'm now the dad of two black kids. It's a while I have never had to go into a restaurant or a grocery store or seen police lights behind me and ever been afraid because of my being the privileged trifecta of not just being somebody who's white, but somebody who's a man, but also a United Methodist pastor. That's a pretty nice card to play. I've only, I've been pulled over a lot of times. I've only had a ticket one time because of that. But you see, Noah and Hannah are gonna grow up and they're gonna experience race and racism in a much different way than I have ever experienced it in my life. And I I was a history major in college, so I know our country's long history with racism all too well. I know everything that has happened. I, I studied it, but now I'm experiencing it differently. And so I kind of feel broken as I'm watching the world right now. And maybe, just maybe, you might be feeling it too. You're starting to feel that divisiveness in our country, and you maybe you're wanting to start working for reconciliation in our world. But my friends, as those disciples were going to Galilee, as they were this part of this broken group now, they were asking that question, what's next? What are we about to do? What's Jesus have in mind for us now? And that question is with us. What now? We have protests all around the nation and and actually all around the world. What now? What now are we to do as we open back up after the pandemic and now with the history of racism that we've had, not just as our country, but all around the world? it's, It's a problem everywhere. It's not just a United States problem. You see, we can't fix our nation's history of racism, and we can't overnight undo any of these unjust systems, so what can we do? So maybe just for a moment we're feeling a little lost like those disciples. You know, they were a broken brotherhood. They were living in a very, um, just, I mean, just imagine that. It's, the brotherhood, that bond that they had was shattered. And my friends, we kind of are living in a, in a country that's kind of like that right now. And so I think one of the most important things that we can learn from what the disciples did in this passage is that they still went. They still followed Jesus, even though they were broken, even though um, they may have given up hope, even though at one point they were behind locked doors out of fear uh, for the Jews Jesus after Jesus' crucifixion. They still got up and followed Jesus when he came and said, go to Galilee. So maybe in our brokenness, maybe in the divisiveness of our country and and through the racial history that we have had, we just can't 
sit back anymore, I don't think. Maybe it's time that we need to get up and, and like those disciples, follow. remember that we have to follow Jesus. And we can still live out the Great Commission if we remember what Jesus called us to do. You see, remember, my friends, Jesus knew that his disciples were broken, that their lives have been shattered, that it wasn't just Jesus that got, um, that was, um, that was betrayed. It was all of them. And so we have to remember those words also at the last part of his commission, great commission, where Jesus says, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So Jesus promised they would never be alone. Because he knew that they, there was going to be some hard work in store for them. But he knew that they could do it. He knew that he was not calling them to this impossible thing. Because he knew that God's presence and God's power through the Holy Spirit was going to be with them. And my friends, we may have some hard work to, ahead of us as we uh, are all a part of reopening our country safely. And, and we're getting back to getting things back as normal as we can, but we also have some hard work to do uh, for reconciling the racial tension and the racial history that we've had as a country. So we have to remember that as we might experience trials, we might experience failures, we might experience brokenness and betrayals along this way, we can all, even in the midst of all of that, even in the worst things that can happen, we can still follow Jesus. Because the, the disciples still followed Jesus up to that mountaintop. And there he sent them out to the whole world, to all the people. And so let us remember that that's what Jesus told his disciples to do. To go to all of the nations and to baptize them and to teach them. And so that's what we are called to do too. To see the whole world as God's beloved children. So let us remember that as Jesus commissioned those first disciples... He also commissions us to be about the work of discipling people, about growing people, about going through hard times, about becoming more uh, uh, faithful in our lives. So that's my hope and my prayer for us this day. And as we are starting to open up back as a church and we're starting to worship back together once again in person, I hope and my prayer for us is that we can live into being faithful disciples through all that we do and all that we say in this world. Because my friends, I think the world is in desperate need of Christians who are, who are being Christians. If Christians were being Christians, we wouldn't have problems. But I think sometimes we forget that we need to step up sometimes and actually live into what Jesus called us to do. So let's get back to continuing that work that those, uh, those 11 disciples started so long ago. The work and the task of building God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven for all of God's beloved children. Amen. Set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy brings unending love, amazing grace. Oh, 
unending love, amazing grace. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear now I first believe my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed Unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion. Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here. set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood His mercy reigns unending love amazing grace unending love amazing grace Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, this is kind of bit going to be our plan for at least the next two weeks. Um, we're going to meet again and as the leadership board and kind of decide when to uh, go into the phase two and phase three. Because um, we've been paying attention, I've been paying attention probably more than anybody else on, on what the numbers are like in the county. And we were wanting to not go back inside until the numbers of cases were going down, and, and, I, and we are finally starting to see that the number of active cases is going down. Uh, we're still getting some new cases every day, but I think on those graphs that the Grayson County Health Department has put out, the active cases are going down, and that's kind of what we were looking at, is kind of those active case numbers. And so hopefully before too long, hopefully we won't have to do this very many weeks before we can go back inside to the air conditioning. Um, uh, but it is good to see you all here, um, to, to not be just talking to a camera. It's, it's been strange. <laughs> you know, I think we did it for not, I've had like nine or, or I think I have nine worship videos, which means we've been doing this for 10 weeks, I think. And so it's good to finally actually see people out, out here and to be worshiping with people. So I want to thank you for being here. And also I've said it so many times if you've been watching the worship videos, but I want to say to you in person, thank you for being a faithful church and how you've uh, continued to faithfully support the ministries of the church through your offerings and through your gifts. And so um, 
I know a lot of my pastor friends, they have really struggled um, keeping offering coming in uh, during this time when people haven't been coming to church. But that's not the case with you guys. We have been very, I mean, I don't think we, I've even seen any downtick in our giving. We have, everybody has been faithful. And I want to say a huge thank you uh, to that because we've been able to still uh, do what we need to do during this pandemic time because uh, for for many of you, maybe it's slowed down, but for me, uh, I'm still really busy keeping up with things. And so, uh, and, and so is everybody in the church that's working to make these things like this happen. So thank you very much. And, and on that note, I do have our, our drive-through bucket right here. If you would like to, as you leave, um, drop off your offering in that bucket. There's some stones down in it that you might be able to stick uh, your thing in, uh, so it doesn't fly away. But I do want to say, you know, that is a uh, here for you as you leave. That did you say something? Do you, do you expect this to feel like they go <laughs> There's Trust me, I, I helped you guys. There's rocks in it to about here. <laughs> so you only have to go that far. <laughs> now, you don't have to fill the whole thing up, but if you want to uh, drop it off as you leave, that's a way that you're, that, you know, we're not passing the plate, um, passing germs. You just drop it in that bucket and it should be good to go. So let me uh, pray a blessing upon our offering, but also let it serve as the benediction for us um, as, as we depart together. So let us pray to God. O oh God of grace and God of glory, we do give you thanks for this time of worship where we've been able to gather and see one another's faces. And we thank you for this beautiful morning and for this cool breeze that has uh, helped us worship outdoors. And Lord, as we prepare to depart under the call of your great commission and, and to, to, to go giving our offerings and our gifts, we pray that you will bless our offering this morning, but also bless us as we continue to offer you our service through our gifts of, of our work and our words that we do throughout the week. So Lord, bless us, bless our families, and bless our church, and continue to guide us as we faithfully follow your Son. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming. So good to see you all. I've been set free. I've got my Savior.